We are in Pisa Cathedral. The current phase of restoration started four years ago with workers using traditional restoration techniques. But this could soon change thanks to innovative materials being tested. Just a few meters from Pisa's famous Leaning Tower, restorers are defying scorching temperatures to bring back shine to the city's cathedral. Ordinary restoration techniques like laser are being used on much of the stonework that dates back to the 11th century. But a brand new technique is also being used, a new material made of innovative nanoparticles meant to consolidate the inner structure of the stones. It's being applied mainly on marble. Numero 1, 5.34, 21.38. Questa porosità ridotta evidentemente necessita... Marble has very low porosity, which means we have to use nanometric particles in order to go deep inside the stone to ensure that the treatment is both efficient while still allowing the stone to breathe. ...garantire comunque una traspirabilità, ma garantire un'effettiva efficacia dei trattamenti. The material developed by the European research team includes calcium carbonate, which is a mix of calcium oxide, water and carbon dioxide. The nanoparticles penetrate the stone, cementing its decaying structure. It's important that these particles have the same chemical nature as the stones that are being treated, so the physical and mechanical processes that occur over time don't lead to the breakup of the stones. Vienna's St. Stephen's is another of the five cathedrals where the new restoration materials are being tested. The first challenge for researchers is to determine the mechanical characteristics of the cathedral stones. Since there are few original samples to work on, they had to figure out ways of aging samples of stones of similar nature to those originally used. We uh, tried different things. We tried uh, freestore, salts and acids, and we decided to go with thermal aging. So what happens is that uh, we heat the stone and at certain temperatures, the mineral expand in certain directions. And when they expand, they build up stresses to the neighboring minerals and then they crack. And we need those cracks in order to consolidate them. Consolidating materials were then applied on a variety of limestones, sandstones and marble. A selection of the different types of stones that were used to build cathedrals around Europe. What researchers are looking for are very specific properties. First of all, the consolidating material has to be well absorbed by the stone. Then, as it evaporates, it has to settle properly within the stone structure. It should not shrink too much. All materials shrink when drying, including consolidating materials. They should adhere to the particles of the stone, but shouldn't completely obstruct its pores. Further tests are underway in cathedrals across Europe in the hope of better protecting our invaluable cultural heritage.